solid. Okay, I'll open the waiting room now to begin the meeting. Everyone have a great meeting. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Dallas ISD Bond and Construction Services Bond 2020 meeting regarding replacement school for Martha Turney Riley Elementary School. Um, we're excited to have you join us today. We know we have people joining us both on our Zoom call live as well as joining us on Facebook. We are broadcasting live in Spanish and English on Facebook. I'm continuing to open the waiting room because we do um, have a number of people that are still joining us. So I'm gonna pause at this moment to allow our interpreter to come on and provide instructions on how to participate in Spanish. Go ahead. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Uh, buenas tardes, padres. En unos momentos vamos a comenzar con la interpretación al español. Si ustedes desean escuchar esta presentación en español, pueden seleccionar la opción en español en la parte derecha inferior de la pantalla, que es el icono del mundo. Si por algún motivo no escucha, eh, regresa al inglés y vuelva a intentar la opción en español. Si aún no funciona, favor de avisarnos por el chat. También puede participar a través de la plataforma de Facebook y Dallas ISD en español. Desafortunadamente, la opción de interpretación no es compatible con las computadoras Chromebook. Así que le recomendamos que intente entrar a la reunión utilizando un teléfono celular, iPhone o Android o una computadora eh, iPad, tableta eh, para poder escuchar la reunión en español. Gracias. Ok, Ms. Bell, you can start the interpretation feature. Thank you so much. We're turning it on. Okay, once again, this is the Dallas ISD Bond 2020 meeting regarding the new replacement campus for Martha Turner, Riley, Martha Turner Riley Elementary School. We're so pleased to have a number of you join us today. We will have an opportunity to join us if you're joining us on in the Zoom meeting. There will be an opportunity for question and answers, and there are several ways you can do that. At a point in time, we, I will be, um, if you raise your hand using the reactions button at the lower right hand corner, then and we can go to you at when the appropriate time to have you go off, um, off mute and answer your question to the appropriate party. And you can also share any questions you may have um, in the chat room if you're joining us in live on the Zoom call. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, we encourage you to answer your ask your questions and share any thoughts you may have as comments on either Dallas ISD uh, Facebook Live or Dallas ISD in Espanol. We will get them answered as quickly as possible. So what we want to make sure that we have, um, give you one second, we're having a little difficulties with our interpreter. So give me a moment to fix that. To make sure that we are indeed broadcasting on both channels. Okay. And we still have a few people joining us in the, in the waiting room as well. So make sure that everyone knows how to participate. Um, it's my pleasure tonight. A great school starts at the leadership, and we're so we're so fortunate that at this particular campus we have a wonderful leader and educator, um, and principal um, Cole O'Neill. Principal O'Neill, if you'd like to make any um, opening remarks at this time. Yes, Miss Bell. Um, good evening, everybody, and I just want to start off by welcoming everyone tonight to the reveal of the Riley Building Design. Um, the new Riley Building is going to be a great opportunity for our students, our parents, our staff, and our community. And we appreciate all of the feedback that has been given over the last few months in the design process for the new Riley. And we really just want to take the time to thank each of one, one of you that has participated in those previous design meetings. And we want to welcome those who may have not participated in the previous design meetings, uh, meetings um, to our meeting tonight. Um, again, we appreciate all of the feedback has, that has been given, and we look forward to hearing your feedback tonight. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Thank you so much. And we're so pleased in Dallas ISD that we also have an incredible addition to our boots on the ground um, principals and, and educators at each campus. We also have a phenomenal group of, of support team in the form of our executive directors who support our campuses and add additional leadership and guidance um, in educating our and educating our community. Um, so we're pleased to have us joining tonight. 
the executive director for this particular network of schools, Ms. Le um, Lisa Vega. Ms. Vega, if you'd like to make your remarks, please do so at this time. Yes, thank you so much, Jacqueline Bell, for that introduction. So good evening, everyone. I'm so excited to be here this evening with you all for the Martha Turner Riley uh, Bond meeting tonight, the unveiling of the finalized design. So my name is Lisa Vega. I am the proud executive director for the Brian Adams North Dallas Cluster. And first, I want to welcome everyone this evening. And I want to welcome Dallas ISD Bond, the design project team, Trustee Mitchke, uh, Principal O'Neill, and most importantly, the Riley staff, the Riley parents, and the Riley community. So this is going to be an exciting evening tonight, and I cannot wait to see the design. Wonderful. And thank you um, both for what you do to make sure that our children are educated and safe um, in during these difficult times and always. We really appreciate you for the concerning care you give to our, to our students every day. Um, we're also very fortunate. Um, Speaking of leadership, uh, the trustee for the district, Dan Mishke, is a passionate advocate for education in, throughout Dallas ISD, and he's here joining us this evening. Uh, trustee Mishke, would you like to make any remarks? Yes, thank you. I would uh, like to uh, welcome everybody to the meeting. Um, this is really exciting, and I, I really appreciate all of the community support uh, that, that we've seen uh, for this new school. And... Um, this, this new building is going to be great for the community and great for our students. And um, I want to add that these, these meetings are, are being recorded. And um, if, um, if you have um, friends and neighbors who want to keep up with uh, progress, uh, please, please direct them to, to the website. And I will post uh, information on the uh, Lockwood Neighborhood Face page and the Martha Turner Riley uh, PTA page. But, but I wanna thank everybody again for all of your support and your input. Um, it, it, this is going to, going to be amazing. Thank you all. And thank you so much for your leadership and your continued support um, of our campuses and of our district trustee. We do have, um, in addition to, in addition to, um, excuse me, <clears throat> In addition to our own staff tonight, this in addition to revealing the building, we're also gonna be um, focusing on and covering some of the issues regarding zoning for this particular uh, meeting. And we do know that the compliant, one acknowledge the fact that the compliant commissioner for the city of Dallas, Michael Young is in the meeting. So thank you for joining us as well. Um, bond 2020 is the largest bond program in the history of the state of Texas. And it is being led by our own Deputy Chief of Bond and Construction Services, Brent Alfred. So I'm gonna pause at this time to let Mr. Alfred kind of give some background information and, um, and to actually um, lead us in this, but open up the meeting. Go ahead, Mr. Alfred. All right, thank you, Ms. Bell. And uh, thank you, Raleigh community. This has been a great journey and process so far. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as we had on the building and design side. Uh, this is our third meeting. This is really the reveal and uh, show you all the feedback that we've uh, received from you and kind of show you our final rendition. Now, I know there's a lot of questions about uh, building heights, you know, traffic queuing and setbacks. Uh, we will review that. Uh, I think our architect and our zoning consultant will go over that thoroughly. And if there are any questions after the meeting, please, we're gonna hang back and uh, answer those questions for you. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Andy with Manning Architects to kind of lead you guys through this presentation. Thank you. Before you begin, Andy, we do want to remind you that there will be an opportunity to ask questions um, and either in the chat room or in the um, or to go offline and, and on Facebook as well. So it's actually to hold the questions until the end of the presentation. Go ahead. All right. Uh, my name is Andy. I'm from Andy Architects. I'm very privileged to work on this beautiful project here. And I'd like to thank everyone for your interest. Um, again, it's been mentioned before. This is our third meeting, but I may give you some additional information for, for those who came to the meeting for the first time. So without any further ado, uh, let's see. So the way we started the project, uh, we started this with this idea, uh, which is a BIG, Bold, Innovative, and Generational. 
And this is a thematic element that we, we discussed since the beginning of the project on the first meeting. Um, so the big idea <clears throat> is also about being humble within the context of this residential zone, rather than being a loud building that, pro, uh, that uh, projects out onto the residential neighborhood. Uh, our design intent was to really fit within the context of the existing neighborhood, um, just like the existing building is being able to achieve with the scale and some of the materials. So that was the one idea that we took from the get go. And the second idea is that how do we become innovative and taking the innovative idea into uh, sustainability? How do we do that without spending way too much materials and way too much um, money? So for example, we have existing pavilion here that's already there. Uh, in, in the existing school. So that is something that we would like to preserve and save and create community garden around it. And you're gonna see some images later on so that it can become kind of reminiscence of what was before, but also a teaching tool uh, for students uh, in this community garden about biology, how to grow, how to be patient, how to be a good member of this great campus. And the third idea was generational. How do we make this school a long lasting? So it can be a great place to teach and innovate and continue to make progress within our community. And the idea was that how to be generational, how to be then become resilient. Some of the architectural ideas that we took from the existing neighborhood is that uh, this neighborhood was uh, made uh, in mid-century after the war. And, and the, at the time, the style of the architecture was very, rather than being super decorative, it was about keeping it humble, simple, and simple details last a long time and they become very resilient. And those are some of the ideas that we took and applied to uh, our building as well. So that we have uh, details that are simple and plain and really blends in with the existing context of the beautiful neighborhood we have. Okay, so those of you coming to the meeting for the first time, uh, this is the site plan. Um, I'm gonna <clears throat> point to uh, this uh, dotted outline of the existing school here. So that's located at the northern portion of the site. And then to the south is the, is the location for replacement school. And after the replacement school is fully constructed, uh, while existing school is in operation, at the completion of the new school, we're going to locate our students to the new school. And then we have to demolish the old school and then continue with the soccer fields, as you can see, um, and the playgrounds and, uh, and the northern parking lot, parking lot that's gonna serve the pickup and drop off zone. Um, the building is one stories um, all the way through. There are no second stories. Um, uh, from the get-go, our idea was to how to make this kind of scale down and really blend in with the neighborhood. So the idea was uh, keeping the high volume space in the center of everything. That means it's the farthest away from the residential um, units. That means uh, the high volume space in perspective will be relatively, relatively smaller. So uh, in the center, we have gymnasium. Um, but uh, all the way around will be a one-story building. So this drawing here is showing you uh, the basic program of the building, what's in there. Um, so a quick overview is that we have a pre-K first wing here in orange, and we have second and fifth in red, uh, administration zone in light blue, and then we have a special ed right next to the administration area. 
And in the center, again, is the high volume space. We try to put everything in the center. Um, that brings the scale of the building down uh, to the, so it can blend well in the residential neighborhood. Uh, in yellow, we have media. Uh, we have cafetorium. Those who are not familiar with the term cafetorium, uh, it is a, a mixed use area between a dining purpose and also a performance purpose when there is like a music uh, or acting performance. And those areas are connected to music and art. And in gray, we have support area. Uh, at the bottom, food service right next to the dining area. So this is Ariel. Um, before I begin this, I'd like to point out to the key plan that's at the upper left corner. And the red is the cone of vision that you're looking at. So you can refer <coughs> reference this image on every image so you can orient yourself as to what you're looking at in relationship to the site plan, okay? Uh, so to the south, we have uh, this long wall here, which is primary purpose is to kind of shielding uh, from the neighbors. So we have some kind of utilitarian space here. So that's completely away. And later on, you will have a, a street level uh, perspective you can see as to how this feels uh, if you're, uh, you're, you're the neighbor, okay? And the next image is going to the north uh, of the building. Here we have a soccer field here. And then we have a basketball. Uh, we have a small kids playground. Um, and we have uh, playground equipment. It's not gonna be empty like that. And we're not showing it because uh, there are some specific things that we need to talk about uh, with the DISD. And here uh, is a uh, older kids uh, play playground. And in the middle, this is the pavilion that I was talking about where we're gonna keep it uh, from the existing school. And then around it, we're gonna create community garden that can serve as educational opportunities and also community engagement with the school. And of course, here, uh, is the uh, the parking space here uh, for pickup and drop off and also uh, staff parking. And we have a canopies that's gonna be a functional element uh, when kids are being dropped off and picked up. Okay, then go to the next page. So this is uh, one of the facades. Again, the material palette is, we're really drawing from the neighborhoods. Uh, the facade is not gonna be loud. It's gonna be very nice canvas so that we're, we can accentuate the landscape in front and uh, having that poised uh, uh, ambiance between the houses and the school. This is a facade that's gonna, just, that's looking to the media center, which is a, a kind of similar to library um, for the school. And this is what kind of what it feels like when you are dropping off your kids uh, or picking them up. Here's going to be a protective uh, layer of canopies. You can be protected from sun and rain. And this is the entry uh, of the building. Um, if you look at the scale, um, so this is about uh, 10 foot uh, from the ground, uh, so you can be sure. And there's an overlap between the building overhang and standalone canopy here, uh, so that you're fully protected uh, during the pickup and drop off. And then here uh, we have a fence area where the soccer field and basketballs uh, during the whole time when your kid when your when your kid is enjoying the outdoor activities, uh, it's a completely fenced area, so there's a level of protection uh, for the kids. And this is the image that I was referring to. If you look at the uh, site plan uh, to the upper left, uh, this is the the angle of the view you can see. Uh, the whole strategy was that, you know, how to we, how we keep uh, single story all the way through. Um, 
And then as you can see this piece here, it, which is the highest volume space and it's the gym. It has to be high because there are volleyball and basketball activities within. So it has to meet a certain height, uh, it's a requirement. Uh, and those elements are in the center of the building. So very far, you can see the scale uh, figure here uh, and you can kind of see uh, the height of the wall here in relationship to uh, the human figures as to how big they are. And we're going into the inside. This is one of the corridors uh, looking at the uh, pre-K through first the collaboration zone. Um, idea here is to uh, have the uh, corridor and the collaboration kind of collide within, so it becomes kind of unique uh, space within. And as you turn the corner, uh, there's a little plinth uh, where kids can go up to uh, near the window and then have uh, discussions. Uh, on the either side, the white portions are writable surfaces. So kids can draw and teachers can talk about um, the art or history, or you know, you can write and draw. So we get, we're providing a lot of writable services. Uh, and if you look to the other side, uh, this is you're looking at the ceiling with the integrated uh, light fixtures. And there are some opportunities to something fun. And this is a kind of perspective of uh, an image on the wall that also relates to the carpet below. And there, it creates kind of more kind of fun uh, opportunity for kids uh, so that this space becomes uh, something other than classroom. Uh, moving them into a different atmosphere can create different opportunities. So moving on, this is uh, second through fifth graders. Um, also here, the theme is kind of like a nature where you have uh, near the window and to the right side, uh, we have different uh, bench heights uh, because kids at this age level, they're very different heights. Um, so we have different seating heights here. Um, and then we got more lively color colors uh, on the ceiling and also at the bottom that kind of imitates in you know, the sand and water uh, and such. Uh, and this is the cafetorium um, when it is being used as a dining hall during the lunch hours. We have kids sitting in the foreground and then we're gonna have a curtain here. So it's kept nice. And then we have uh, absorption uh, light fixtures that absorbs uh, sound and also uh, provides light at the same time. And then it has integrated uh, school colors which are white. Uh, red and blue. And this is from the stage uh, looking toward um, the kids uh, during the regular use, which is the dining function. Uh, you're going to have kids here. Uh, then we have a little window here. The daylight comes in. Uh, it helps this space to be more lively. And during the performance, uh, it's going to have a very different atmosphere when everything's kind of toned down. Um, and then you can have uh, either, you know, play or music venue. And then you can have uh, the single uh, chairs deployed so that we can have uh, parents and community uh, to participate and enjoy the performance. Uh, last uh, but not least, this is a library. Uh, we have uh, wood ceiling here. Um, and then uh, to the left side, to the center, um, is we have kind of more lively light fixtures that also kind of indicates uh, with the school colors. And then we have uh, different zones within the me uh, media center. We have uh, bookshelves and also we have uh, learning opportunities, and then we have emotional learning zone that is quite different from a uh, regular uh, learning zone. And then at this corner, we have a librarian office, and then we have interior windows for supervision for what happens in the library. And this long window is one of the first exterior views that we saw that brings daylight in 
and then that increases the brain activity for kids um, so they can learn better. And it's nicer to have some. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, our traffic plan. Here, I'm going to move that a little bit. Um, so the traffic pattern, uh, what we are proposing, will be just as it is existing. For example, we already have a one-way sign here. So Lipid Avenue goes east during school hours and Sunland Street goes south during school hours. Uh, and those uh, signs will remain the same. Uh, so how we approach the pickup and drop off is exactly the same, except one big thing. We have more than 2000 feet of queuing space combined in the nor Northern pickup and drop off and the Southern. So what that means is that right now, Pick, pick up and drop off, we have a lot of congestions on the street. But because of the new site planning idea, we are able to queue uh, all those parents here in blue color and also here to the south. And that's the big idea. And that's going to really alleviate uh, what happens uh, during the pick up and drop off. Okay. Um, general timeline, timeline uh, design uh, is going to wrap up uh, toward the summer of this year. Um, and then it's going to go out to the bidding process with um, contractors. And that's going to be somewhere between this summer and the fall. Uh, and the construction will take approximately two years. So it'll begin the fall this year. And then it'll wrap up in the summer 2024, getting ready for uh, the fall 2024. Okay. So with that, I know there's a lot of information in short amount of time, but uh, Ms. Bell, I think this is a good time uh, to have any questions or comments. Back to you. Thank you so much and what an exciting design. We do have a number of comments coming through already in the chat room. I'm gonna give instructions one more time how one can participate since this is our open discussion period. Um, if you're joining us live on Zoom, you can certainly enter your question or comment in the chat section. We'll get those read and responded to. Or if you would patiently wait, you can also um, use the Be Actions button at the lower right-hand side of the lower right-hand corner of your screen to raise your hand and will um, allow you to go off mute at a certain time. Um, if you're joining us on Facebook, please just submit your comments and questions um, there as the comment section will get those shared. So I'm going to start the chat room because we have a very busy chat right now. Um, first question, first comment is from Ms. Detler, it seems. I appreciate efforts to blend the design into the Lockwood neighborhood. Thanks for considering a small community garden outdoor learning area. Uh, and there's a question from Mr. Flores, was the aluminum wood look softened at the entry canopy removed? Um, and I believe that was from a previous design perhaps? Oh, yes, uh, I can clarify that. That is, okay, so, um, this is going to be all aluminum construction. Uh, what I'm pointing at is a standalone canopy to the right. Uh, so it's going to be all aluminum and it's going to be very durable finish. Uh, at the underside of uh, the overhang from the building itself, it, it's a wood texture, but it's aluminum. Uh, so there will be no maintenance issues. Um, it's, it's, it's so high up there. And the technology has advanced so much that you will not be able to tell if that's aluminum. But aluminum uh, it is it's much easier to maintain and it's going to be much longer lasting, which is part of the narrative they were using uh, to be resilient. Um, so did, did I answer your question? It's not wood. Yes. It's aluminum. Great, you did. Um, um, comment from um, another participant that the library is absolutely beautiful, beautiful library plan. Um, here's a question. Question one, how many square feet does the Riley, does the current Riley building have and how many square feet 
will the new building have? Uh, right now, uh, I think we're off by only maybe, a, it's very same, uh, very similar. Um, the existing school is like 71,000, I believe. Uh, and our uh, school right now, it's like 73 or so. But, you know, they can, uh, they can change just a little bit. Uh, but this is the ballpark. So at the scale of this building, they're essentially the same. Okay. Question number two is, when will the building, uh, when is the existing building going to be demolished? Uh, existing building will be demolished after, let me go back. Um, sorry, don't throw up. I know this is right <laughs> so fast. Um, so the green line is the existing building. So to the south, when we have the new building complete and we have the certificate of occupancy, and then we're gonna move our kids to the new building. And then we have to establish um, a construction zone uh, so we can safely demolish the school. Uh, but having said that uh, in May, hopefully that's the summer of 2024, but that's, that's difficult to say because in, in this world right now, we have a lot going on. There are delays in supply chain and so, and that is some of the things that's totally beyond my control and also beyond districts and also contractor. But to simply, to answer your question, hopefully it is uh, summer 2024. Okay, great. And the third question, what's the capacity for the new building? Uh, the capacity is based on uh, Texas and Education Administrative Code. Um, and our goal is uh, 650 kids. Um, right now, existing school has around 550 kids, uh, but the, this new building uh, will have a capacity and that's based on uh, number of classrooms and how many kids are per classrooms. Um, so we have additional 100 kids that we can welcome in the future. Fantastic. Um, another question, will there be a science lab or science rooms included? Yes. Um, we, we, we're not showing it um, here because this is a very diagrammatic program, but uh, in the second through the fifth, uh, we do have uh, science rooms uh, for um, all, all the all, all levels of uh, grades uh, from second through fifth and also collaboration space as well. Great. Um, and oh, Mr. Milo, certainly Mr. Milo said, can she work there remotely? She, if the building is so inviting. Um, if, you, if you don't want to join staff, we certainly, I know the principal will certainly welcome volunteers to come and help with our kiddos. Uh, will there be a dis another question? Will there be a discussion to explore other options on a rebrand for the school color palette and logo design? I can actually take that one and answer that. Um, if you would, if you're a member of the, of the community, reach out to the principal. Um, there is a process for the Dallas ISD regarding um, rebranding of our schools from logos and, and define, redefining color palettes. So if you reach out to the principal, we can put her in touch and she can put in, make a request to have a rebrand consultation with the Dallas ISD marketing team and have that done. But please just um, speak to the principal about that and we, um, and see where we are. And if there's a real interest, we can certainly, that's something that we can address with the principal. There's a, um, it would not be a single decision. The process includes, it's a lengthy process, but it does include input from the PTA, from the SBDM. So therefore the community and the, and the um, stakeholders and even the kiddos themselves have input in that particular process. Um, so we can certainly make that happen before the final design goes in. So I'm not sure about this particular question, and I saw someone had their hand raised. So I'm going to try to put these two together. Um, it's about the traffic patterns. If you could go to that slide on the traffic patterns, Andy. Um, there seems to be concern about or additional questions about the area. I don't know if you can make that any larger about the queuing area and about the traffic pattern. They were wondering if, if, if entering and exiting uh, off a of lipid could be smoother than, than proposed. Um, there's, some more, there's some more of that. And um, uh, 
Uh, yes, uh, let me try to zoom in uh, because I know some of you are watching it on your phone. It will be impossible to see what's going on. So let me just elaborate just a little more on the traffic pattern itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So during the school hours, uh, the Lippitt Avenue, which is this one, if you're not from the neighborhood, um, Lippitt Avenue will go to the east. Okay, um, and the Sunland Street will go south. Okay, so the intent for the northern parking lot is that we have two lanes for queuing. So there's a one lane, I'm gonna zoom in. There's a one lane to, to come in. And then immediately you are allowed to have two queuing lanes. So that what that idea is doing is getting the cars from the street to the queuing area as quickly as possible, okay? And then you continue to queue in, and then you're gonna drop off your kids here, and then you'll be run going out, and then your only option during the school time is to turn right on Lippitt Avenue, okay? And then you have to either go straight at this intersection or go left, or you can go right, okay? And if we go to the south, here is another drop off. And the intent uh, at this point is to have uh, older kids to drop off here and the younger kids here. But there, there will be, if you got younger kids and older kids at the same time, there will be some exceptions that, that we have to work out with school. But intent here in the younger pickup and drop off area is that you're gonna <clears throat> go south on Sunland and then enter this area here. Okay. And then drop off your kids here. And then if you're done, you can queue out onto this lane and then on, on out you go. So that's how it's gonna work. Um, so again, I'm just gonna draw this real quick so you can visualize it. If you're coming from Lipid Avenue, you come in, you drop off, you go. And then from here, you go south, you get in, drop off your kids, and then you get out. So that's again, the idea. Mm -hmm. And again, we're basically by queuing, the, by having queue, two queuing lanes or two drop off lanes on the property itself, we're removing traffic off of Lippitt. Correct. And we have more than 2,000 uh, 2, linear feet. Uh, so that's going to help out tremendously. Okay. Now there's another couple of questions here. I'm, I'm gonna to try to bump them together. I see some repeat questions. Um, there's a question, I see a large tract of land on the corner of Lippin and Sunland. Where are they going to build there? What are you going to put there? Oh, this here. Yes, I believe. So, Is that the area you're, you're speaking of? It's like the large white area, let me see. Um, who's um, this one? I, I think so. Mm -hmm. So, I believe the question is coming from, we have the existing school, which is a light green. Mm -hmm. So we have, we, when we demolish it, uh, we're gonna have open green area here. At this time, there are a lot of trees there. Uh, so we're, we're gonna tr uh, do our best to save as many trees as possible. Um, but it's gonna be uh, just open green area. Uh, one of the reason to add this kind of sidewalk is if you would like to cut across, if you're in the neighborhood, uh, you can use this sidewalk and go to the other side. Uh, so there's a little more connection there. But, but again, when it comes to kid safety, this area uh, that I have my cursor on is an enclosed space. So during the school time, the playground, soccer field, basketball, are in a very safe zone. So that allows um, the neighborhood to really use this sidewalk uh, for uh, general purposes. 
But in short, we're not going to put anything there. It's going to be just open space. Um, and I think that's nice to have uh, with the big trees. Now we have a question about um, how close is the building to the curb on the Sunland side? On the Sunland side? Mm -hmm. um, on the Sunland side, we have a little more space. Okay. Oh. Let me go back to the image so I can zoom in. So, so from blue to red is a 25 foot setback. And that's the, that's the zoning. Um, so I think it's a little more than 25 feet. So maybe to the tip of this fin looking thing of the building, uh, maybe 28 foot uh, and to the literal face of the building, perhaps 30 plus feet. Okay. Um, there's also a question about the section. If you can go to the image that shows the gym, um, the overall building with the gym in the middle, there's a question about the how, um, what section is the tallest? Is it the gym and how tall is it? Right. There are, yes, if you can go to the, I think you had a, a rendering of the gym area. If you can go to that particular image. Sure. It shows the gym area. This is a question coming off the nearing side. Uh, okay, from the nearing. I don't have an image from nearing. Um, but, if you, but if you can just go ahead, go to the one that shows, and there was an image you had that showed the gym itself. That's good right there, I think. Yeah, that so. <clears throat> the question so is, is how tall, the question is, mm -hmm. um, how tall is the gym? And, 33 feet. Uh, 33 feet? And that's the, to the top of the parapet. And one of the reasons why we need that height is there will be some mechanical equipment. Um, so without having the parapet, you're going to see the mechanical equipment and you don't want to see that. Uh, so one of the reasons we're going to have a parapet, so it obstructs the view. And also we're going to have nice screens around the mechanical units on the roof. Uh, so we can make it as nice as possible. Okay, great. There's also a question about the uh, closest of proximity of the sports fields to the school and to the windows. Um, is it, is it, it seems to be kind of near, there's concern about foreseeable accidents with balls and other things and about the safety of that particular area as it relates to the building itself. Uh, let's see, let's go back to the site plan. Sorry, I have to do this every time I zoom in, so it's, it's quite confusing. Um, yes, yes. Um, but there is uh, about 20 foot uh, gap between the face of the building and also basketball. And I do understand the concern. Um, so a couple of things. One is we have a lot of trees here. Uh, further we, we push uh, the soccer field and basketball, more trees we had to cut down. And that's, those trees are really beautiful. Uh, we, we're trying to save as many as possible. Um, and the second thing, the type of um, glass that we're using here, uh, I'm not sure if that's the exact, uh, the point of the question, it's not gonna break uh, by a kid throwing basketball or football. Uh, even firefighters have a hard time breaking those commercial windows with the ax. So don't worry about that. Uh, but if your concern is a kid running into the building, uh, the basketball is running in this direction, east-west. So I think it'll minimize it. And I think 20 foot is more than a reasonable distance. Uh, so the kid uh, will not be running into uh, the building. Okay. I think that's okay. Okay, I'm going to direct this next question to Mr. Alfred. Mr. Alfred, um, was the, this talks about the process, um, and it says, was the current staff allowed an opportunity to have some input into this project as they will be on a daily basis? It is important. Also, how will this construction project affect the community surround the school um, concerned about noise and possible damage to the roads? I think you're best to speak on that on the process and everything. Yeah, uh, yeah. Part of our process after we have these large community meetings with our neighbors, we do meet internally in small groups with some of the academic leadership and the teachers and, and Miss O'Neill and her staff to talk about some of the uh, internal spaces. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, 
after this meeting, we're going to continue to have those series of small group meetings uh, with teachers and staff uh, to make sure we have everything laid out uh, appropriately. Uh, as, in regards to the uh, uh, the construction going mm -hmm. on in the neighborhood. Uh, we're gonna uh, obey the city of Dallas ordinance. Uh, we can only work seven to seven, uh, Monday through Saturday and no work on Sunday. So uh, the contracts won't be there, there after uh, seven o'clock. And, and also um, we're making a commitment as well. Uh, we have a, a full, we'll be developing a, a communications plan. So if there's any, um, seen disruptions or anything like that, or an unusualness that comes up um, during the construction period, we, the community will be notified in advance when, whenever possible. Um, so I, we're looking at the Flamingo entrance. Um, they're asking the entrance from Flamingo, that parking lot, what is it primarily going to be used for? And where are the dumpsters going to be located? Sure. I'm going to zoom into that area so you can see. Uh, so here, this will be primarily for staff uh, for the kitchen area here. Okay. And then we have uh, those are trash and recycle. And we have wall here all the way around, that's gonna completely shield that from anybody who's shorter than 10 foot tall. Um, and then we have uh, our a chiller here that's also exposed, but you'll never see those things. Uh, again, going back to, let's see, I'm gonna show you an image, which is this image. So this wall here, right here is the wall that I was just highlighting. And inside that other side of that wall is where we have uh, trash and recycle. So it's gonna, and we're gonna do, uh, this is not shown as well, but we're gonna have nice, nice trees in front of that wall and also low rising landscape so that this wall actually becomes like a nice canvas until we're gonna have um, nice landscapes and other good, good stuff. Okay. Now, there was a question about having a multi-purpose room on the corner of Lippitt and Sunland. Um, Ms. Um, Santiago Velasquez, if you could go off mute and just kind of, I'm not sure if you're asking within the building or it's a separate structure. I'm not certain. Or if you could clarify that question about a multi-purpose room. Una estructura por separado. Okay. Um, if, you could, if you could put it in... Um, if our interpreter can help share or, or help get that question answered, we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay. Um, and it's asking about queuing. The queuing is the queuing area is planned with increased traffic flow. And the answer to that, I think we've already answered that. Asked that, that yes. Um, we have a question. The PTA has held discussions about additional outdoor learning areas in the future. Do these areas need to be located within a fence boundary, or they can they be located in the open areas proposed? outside the fence. And I'm assuming you mean where um, Ms. Flores, okay, except the structure, thank you. Um, 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 Alexis Flores, I'm assuming you're meaning out of where the existing campuses now will be demolished in that green space, or would it be possible to plan for future electrical needs for these areas? Um, um, for example, extended conduit to plan um, for an electrical panel to provide lighting. So they're asking about an expansion of the outdoor learning spaces and perhaps lighting in the green space that will be created by or planning for lighting um, in the green spaces that will be made available once the old, the former campus is demolished. So I guess the question is, can we have some kind of outdoor space in this area? Correct. And, and it, at the very least, um, 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 electrical and lighting for that particular space is make it more usable. Uh, if anything, uh, well, first of all, I think that's uh, the discussion that we need to have with the school, uh, because it really depends on how principal feels good about exposing the kids outside of this fence. So I think that's a bigger discussion, because I think we already have enough 
going on here. We have the pavilion and also community garden around it. We're also providing water so that there's a, you know, literally opportunity for kids to water um, and also community members to come in and uh, water and take care of uh, this garden. Uh, but when it comes to electricity, um, oh, I, I guess we can't provide one, um, but I, I kind of question what would be the purpose of the electricity uh, out here, especially. So I think that's a discussion to be had. It sounds like with the as we fine tune the plans with the campus itself to see how they feel as though they may need for either added security or whatever, or maybe electrical or lighting out there. So we'll make sure to make note of that as we're going into our smaller group discussions. Um, we're trying to be aware and cognizant of time. Um, and I think this may go to Mr. Alfred and to um, oh, Carl, you're on the call as well. There's a, there was a request to describe how the traffic pattern will evolve as the school moves from the existing school to the existing school with construction to the new school with demolition and then to the new school campus. And I'm not sure if that, Brent, if you want to take that. Okay. I can try like uh, uh, Andy described earlier, ideally on our ideal plan, uh, we'll start the demo after um, the school session, May of 2024. So they will remain in the existing traffic pattern. Uh, and when they come back in the fall, that's when the new traffic pattern would start. So if we hit our timing just right, there shouldn't be any uh, disruption to that until we start uh, school in fall of 2024. Uh, did I answer the question? I believe so. And I think that also we'll make sure that again, of uh, the communications plan that we go about, all those information such as traffic plans and those type of things will be included in strategic communications at those particular breakpoints and um, safety concerns and all the type of things that the campuses need to know when you're going through um, construction zone of building a new campus while you have an existing building. We'll make sure that that communication is, we work with the principal to ensure those communications are going out to her, to the families as well. Um, and in fact, I will share with you that one thing that a couple of our camps have done have been very well received is as they're transitioning from their former campus into their new campus, they, we've actually come out and done videos uh, where people have driven through to show people exactly how the traffic patterns exist and what to do. And families have found those very helpful uh, in transitioning points so we can make sure that we have those uh, factored in as well. Now back to the question about the multi-purpose room on the corner of Lippitt and Sunland. The at question was, is there a budget to build a separate structure there that could be a multi-purpose room that's not adjacent to the campus itself? Well, it's not in our foreseeable future. Right now, we're trending right at our project budget. Uh, so right now, I think Andy also said we want to kind of try to preserve some of our green space and our trees. We do think that's important. That's come up in several of our community conversations. Okay. Um, there's a question about what is the setback on the nearing side? It's 25 feet. 75? Uh, no, 25. 25. Okay, I want to make sure I heard that correctly. Uh, will there be seats in the gym and can the windows be opened? Uh, in the gym? I, I, will there be seats? I think they mean bleachers in the gym. No, there, there are no bleachers in the gym. Okay. Um, and can the windows be open? I'm thinking they mean um, throughout the building, perhaps, or in the gym. Can the windows be open? Or will they be there, are, there are no windows in the gym. Uh, and, and the reason for that is I would love to have daylight coming in. Um, but the reason for not having that is because we're utilizing the gym as a tornado shelter. And uh, in order to make the entire gym the tornado shelter, in order to protect kids, um, if we choose to use windows there, those windows are four or five times the, the regular windows when it comes to cost. So as an architect, I'd rather spend that kind of money in classrooms where we have larger windows or where they can receive daylight and their, their brain power really goes up. Um, so that's the, the reason for not having any windows in the gym. Uh, and uh, hopefully that's something that the person can understand. It's, it's, more, it's multiple reasons. 
Great. Now we have a couple of kudos here. Thank you for trying to keep and save the existing oak trees. We seriously want them to exist after the project. Um, there was a question about seeing a larger area of, at recess for children can run. There are a couple of playgrounds in addition to the green space. There's also a playground area for smaller children as well. Um, and I'm going to loop this into the next one. Uh, will you include a fence around the, the small gazebo and outdoor learning garden, garden area? Well, let's zoom in. Okay. So just to clarify it one more time, uh, the fenced area is all of these areas. It's quite big. So within the protected area, you can play soccer, basketball, two playgrounds, a pavilion, community garden, all within. So question is having another fence here. Am I understanding the standing no, that, the question? You, you right? explain, no, you explained that question. You, you explained okay. that one. Okay. Great. Um, there's a question about, um, someone was concerned about the, the construction time from seven to seven, um, about the noise from persons who are working from home. But again, I don't know, Mr. Alfred, if you want to enhance, um, expand upon that. No, I, I, I said in the chat, I mean, we're trying to be good neighbors uh, and we're going to work with Miss, uh, Miss O'Neill and there are going to be some testing periods we will not test. But from a very practical matter, most of the construct in the industry, the culture is most of those guys are going to be gone around three o'clock to four, but they have the right, you know, to work till seven. So a lot of that noise activity will not extend to seven at night, just from a, a practical purpose. Okay. Uh, there's another thing about the location of the dumpsters. Hey, thanks for addressing the location of the dumpsters. And is that where the garbage trucks will also pick up the dumpsters and is there a uh, uh, the significant room for them to do so behind an enclosed wall? Yes, uh, they should be able to. Um, so I, I called uh, the dumpster company. Uh, so what they have to do is they, they have to come in and then there's enough room to back in. They pick up the dumpster here, and then back out. Fantastic. Um, what about school bus? We, we didn't talk anything about, you talked about parent drop off, but not about um, drop off for school buses. How would that work? School bus is right there. Um, so uh, we have entrance right here. It's not shown in overall site plan, uh, but um, all the kids who are needing a school bus be right here. And then we on also on this side, we have canopy protecting the kids uh, from sun and rain. And then so that you get out and then hop in. Okay. And thank you, Mr. Milo, for your comments. You said the other, our other Dallas ISD projects have been very conscientious, very conscious of the community and neighbors. So thank you for that compliment. We love to hear those things. Um, there's a comment here. I'm going back to traffic patterns. Uh, I lost one of the things. The current pickup traffic pattern is problematic. Many parents park on the residential side of the street and cross the street to pick up their kids. Is it possible to make nearing one way during pickup hours, such as the time as the new traffic pattern is established after construction of the new school? Parents, um, so that's something to take into consideration as well. So making the nearing drive one way to the north or to the south? Um, Ms. I think Melissa Paul, if you want to go off, if you want to go off mute. I think it has to be to the north, Andy, because otherwise it wouldn't work with Lippet and everything. Yeah. And well, I, think, I think the real answer to that question is, is that, um, and it comes to the principal and their staff making sure that if a, if, if a child is a walker, that's what, people who can walk home, that they're allowed to walk home, but parents are uh, strongly discouraged from parking on those side streets and their kids walking around the corner to the school to get in their parents' car. Um, and, and with a better queuing system where you can get off the street onto the campus, I think it won't be as prevalent as it is, is now on Nearing and Lippitt and probably all the streets around there. So Hi, I think I that's where it comes in play. Can I jump in for a second? Okay. I cool. just, um, Excuse me, could you identify yourself, make sure we know who's speaking? Yes, it's Melissa Paul. That was my question. Okay, thank you, Ms. Paul. And yes, I was suggesting perhaps making nearing 
um, one way during pickup hours to the north, um, simply because it's very difficult to get out of your driveway during pickup hours. And I realize that parents are strongly discouraged, but it doesn't stop them from parking on the residential side, going the wrong way, going the right way. And I feel like it's, it's dangerous for the kids to be crossing the street. So I wish the parents would just pick up on the school side instead. But I want to make sure we say, oh, do we have pickup? and drop off on, on nearing in the new plan? No. No, I'm talking about over the course of the next t at least two years before the oh, new okay. plan is implemented. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, thank you. And thank you for clarifying. Thank you for clarifying that. I'm sorry, we were, we were confused on which, which direction you were speaking. So thank you for clarifying that. You know, I will have the uh, traffic engineer and we'll look at that with the, uh, with the district. It, 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 you're right, it would be a temporary deal for the two years, but. But I, I understand that, um, and and that may be something that comes into play where we put no parking along there while the construction is mm -hmm. under under effect, just because you don't really want that sort of interaction with the vehicles and the construction nearby. So, so we'll get that and may I ask really quickly, does that mean that residents wouldn't be able to park on the street during school hours? No, I think I think we would just look at on the the school side. Um, the other option is you you can put no parking at times a day, but that really again affects your your issues at hand too. You can do it in the afternoon. Morning's usually not a problem. You could do it in the afternoon. You can't park no parking between two and five. The the issue is then if you want to park there two and two and five, you would run into that and. There's a whole long way to do it with resident parking, but for two years, it's probably not worth that effort. But we'll look at different methods to uh, uh, better discourage uh, parents from parking there. Right. Well, the DISD uh, police were involved at some point, but when they quit coming, then... I, I understand. understand. Yeah. <laughs> so who could I follow up with on that, please? Um... Jackie, are, are my contacts in the, or can let's, you put them in there? Let's do this. I can, let me put in, there's a general, I will put in here our general email address for bond communications. If you send, uh, send emails there, we can make sure we get to the appropriate person for follow-up. Thank you very much. No yeah. problem. Thank you Thank so you. much. Okay. And a uh, question about sidewalks. Will the sidewalks around the entire school still exist? Residents often use this for their half mile lap. Yes. Okay, great. Not only that, uh, we have additional sidewalk here. So if you want to do a shorter loop because you're, you're feeling too tired that day, you can <laughs> take a shortcut as well. And you got another option here as well. Great, great. Um, so if we go back to the schedule, a couple of people have joined late and they didn't quite see the, the construction schedule. If you go back to the timeline. Okay, there's a timeline. We can see that the design is currently going on and will wrap up this summer. Uh, we're looking at bidding it out summer 2022 to fall 2022. Um, the construction is starting for fall 2022, summer 2024. And then the delim demolition of the existing campus would take place following the um, students going into occupying the new campus in 2024. Correct. Okay, great. Um, and we agree, and, and again, our commitments throughout this bond process is to be good neighbors and to have um, communication, not just with our families, but also with the community as well. Um, I've, if you go into the website, and I'll put that um, in the chat room again right now, we actually have a website that dedicated for this particular project. And you can, there you will have messaging there. You can also track the progress of the project and other information will be shared there regarding the project throughout this next, um, from now until we actually have that wonderful building dedication sometime in the fall of 2024. So it's like your one-stop shop um, for um, information regarding this wonderful project. We, we kind of, drank, um, I think, repeating questions and what have you. So we seem like we've addressed the majority of the concerns tonight. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Alfred, who maybe can talk about next steps. I know he had mentioned some things. We want to make sure that we know um, kind of this is our third meeting. Yeah. And um, 
Okay, no, we, one more question. One more question came out of the um, proposal. Who from the BISD can share more details regarding the PBD? The plan development. Um, uh, just Mr. Have, Parm Mr. Parman, I know you'd had your hand raised and you lowered it a couple of times. Do you want to go off mute and ask your question? Sorry, yes, I had to find the button. Um, wasn't raising my hand. That was actually applause for some of the answers that were given. So I appreciate oh. those. Um, well, thank you. We don't we don't see applause often. He <laughs> threw me <laughs> off there. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Providing some applause. Um, so when you, I'm maybe using the wrong term. When on the rezoning, um, there's a PPD or a PTD plan, and it has all of the specific details. And when you go and read about it, it says that each one is crafted uniquely for that zoning. Um, and we're just trying to find out where do we get a hold of that, and what are the details that are specific to the rezoning that's being considered for Riley. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, Jackie, I think I can answer that. Um, the um, it, it's the PD is, was submitted to the city uh, right before the end of last year. Um, you can get a copy from the city, but again, if you will, um, uh, Jackie will put the email address about information. And they can forward that to me, and I can send you the, every PD in Dallas. And there's well over a thousand of them. Um, um, the rules are specific for that PD for this school. The setbacks, the height limits, the the plan that that Andy showed you uh, is all part of that. Um, the the traffic management plan that he showed you with the queuing is all part of that PD. And there's no other school, obviously, like Martha Turner Riley. And I can attest to that as I am a graduate of Martha Turner Riley um, in 19 a long time ago. Um, so uh, that that plan will be just for that school, and you can look at the specifics. Um, and if you'll, Jackie will give you the email. Then Jackie or somebody will forward that to me. Then we can communicate sort of off this line and stuff. Um, it's scheduled, uh, hopefully tentatively, to go to the uh, City Plan Commission. Commissioner Young was on there and asked a question about timing of, of, uh, of queuing and stuff. Um, at the end of this month, it'll go to the Plan Commission, um, and then approximately a month to six weeks later, it would go to the City Council. So uh, the notice of that will go to property owners within 500 feet, written notice from the city, and then it'll be an ad in the paper will actually if it goes the end of this month, it probably in next Monday's newspaper. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Pauly. If I have time for a quick follow-up, I just asked. Um, so <laughs> on those um, zoning signs that are surrounding the school that are on the fences, there's a QR code to be able to submit questions. I was yeah. wondering who answers those because we've not received any response for the number of questions that we've submitted there. We don't uh, know where that's, that's the city of Dallas. Okay. That's the city of Dallas. Um, I worked for the city of Dallas a long, long time ago. I can't apologize for them anymore. <laughs> That's okay. You don't have to. We're just wondering where they, who they go to, who do we who do we contact, and who does that actually? Um, um, the uh, planner for this site is a, a, a gentleman named Michael Pepe. I can give you his it's public knowledge, I'm sure, his email address. Hang on one second, because I don't have it memorized. Okay. Paul, if you, can just, if you just go ahead and put it in the chat room. I will do that. Time. I will put it in the chat. Thank you. You're right. That's it, 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 and to make it easy for everyone, Carl, if you will email me that document, we can make sure we add it to the project website for Riley. I, I will do that too. I have actually included that website and it's real easy to remember. We want to make it simple for you. It is dallasisd.org forward slash the new Riley. So that works where you will find all information about this particular project and, and different points. And, and also, in case you missed the previous meeting, the re recordings and presentations for the previous meetings, you can see the entire planning process um, is found there as well. So again, that's dallasisd.org forward slash the T-H-E-N-E-W Riley. And that leads you to the project website. And our email address for questions is boncom, that's B-O-N-D-C-O-M, at dallasisd.org. And that information has been shared in the chat as well. Um, Mr. Alfred, we, this has been a really great and exciting meeting and we're so, um, thank you everyone. Like, again, um, you threw me there, um, sir, because we never, get, we never get applause when we have these meetings. So he threw us off a little bit. Thank you, but, Ms. Um, <laughs> we really are excited about this project. 
and everything. So, and about um, bringing this new campus onto the Raleigh community. We really want to be good neighbors and we're excited to be able to do this for this wonderful learning community. And of course, Carl is keeping us on our toes as a former Martha, Martha Turner Raleigh's alumni um, as well. And he's participated in every meeting in the background as a, as a community member. But uh, Mr. Alfred, if you could kind of um, summarize and let us know where we're going from this particular point, just what to expect. Yeah, thank you, uh, Raleigh community. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Uh, yeah, this was a great meeting. I enjoyed the question, enjoyed the engaging. And, and like Ms. Bell, yeah, I appreciate the applause. Uh, so our next steps, uh, we're, this meeting was really about the community and make sure we fit within your context and we heard your responses. But now it's really time to turn it internal to the DFD teachers and staff. And we're gonna have a few meetings with them to, again, to make sure that uh, they have an input on our interior design and the space that they'll be educating these kids in. So, uh, and as also, we need to have more meetings with the city of Dallas. So right now we're at the design development stage, but we need to go into the construction document phases where we'll get more technically advanced in the drawings. And like I say, have those meetings with the city of Dallas and then bid the project. And, you know, as much as I work with Jackie, she, she wants to have a groundbreaking uh, once we start construction. Uh, come uh, probably 23, the beginning of 23, into 2022. 20, uh, and then, of course, the big ribbon cutting in 2024. But we're going to stay uh, uh, get, getting feedback from you guys, talking to the principals throughout and updating you through the website. So with that, again, I've enjoyed it. And you, we'll be talking to you again soon, Ms. Bell. Okay, yes, and I want to, oh, we have a couple of more compliments. Wow, this never happens for us. <laughs> uh, yes, this Riley teacher is so excited as well. Thank you, thank you. As a parent at Riley, and thank you, um, oops, wait a minute, as a, as a parent for Riley um, and a member of the Lockwood community, thank you to everyone who continues to go over and beyond for our Riley kids. Um, we do have, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cruz, for answering that question. Um, this meeting has been recorded, and it's been recorded in both English and Spanish. It will be posted to our website, the website I gave you, the dallasisd.org forward slash the new Riley um, by close of business tomorrow. The presentation will also be included as well. Um, they're asking will there be another Zoom meeting um, following this, Mr. Alfred? We're, we're not planning on another Zoom. Our, our next big gathering like this will, will be the, the ribbon, the groundbreaking, sorry. Okay, so what we will do is we will continue to have additional information coming on about that. We are working with the principal and we'll be working with the principal on a, a very aggressive um, and comprehensive marketing and communications plan to share information out with the community. So this is not the last you will hear from us, this is the groundbreaking. But at the same time, again, the meetings now become very detailed and very focused on the programming and how things will, will go forth and what will be included in the meeting to meet the needs of the staff as well. Um, but again, we appreciate this input. Um, I encourage you that if you know people who weren't here or are interested in the meeting, be they family members, teachers, um, neighbors, whoever, direct them to that website and they can get a full comprehensive view and listening in to the, see the presentations and listen to this meeting that was recorded. We are sharing in both Spanish and English. Um, also, if nothing else, they can also go to our Facebook page, um, Alice Dallas ISD on Facebook or Dallas ISD Espanol and view and participate there because we do want to have transparency so everyone will know exactly what's going on with this great project. So with that being said, uh, Trustee Mishka, do you have any, yes, the yes, and yes, the chat does get saved with the recording. Yes, it does. Mr. Department, we do, so all the chat is, is saved as well. Okay, I see you, thank you. Now I can tell the difference between a, a raised hand and, a, and, a, and a applause, thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Um, Trustee Mishke, do you wanna have any closing remarks at this time? Just, just another thank you to the community. Um, this, is, this is really exciting and um, can't wait uh, to see this school's break ground and, and two years from now, have kids in it. This is this is going to be great. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you again for joining us this evening. Um, and there's a couple of thank yous from the, from the community, sir, for, for you as well in the chat. Um, Executive Director Vega, do you have, have any closing remarks this time? 
Yes, I just wanted to say thank you to all of our Riley parents and teachers and staff and community um, being able to examine and look at and how exciting the, the, the design was tonight. And so I wanted to thank um, for navigating uh, Mr. Kim and of course uh, the project team in Dallas ISD Vaughn, Trustee Mitchke, and of course you Jacqueline Bell for navigating and facilitating this evening. And so I can't wait for the interior design. So I hope that I can get some, some previews on that as well. And thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much again for all the compliments we're getting from the community for tonight's meeting. We, of course, um, we're building this school, but what's the school without a principal? So we give our closing remarks and our final remarks of the evening to the um, principal O'Neill. Go ahead. Did we lose her? I think Ms. Bell, I think she was trying to get back in. She lost connection. Oh, wow. Okay, well, um, I don't see her in the waiting room, so I know she's having some connection issues, but on behalf of her and the entire team, we want to say thank you again for your continued support of this amazing campus and um, just watch us as we start. We've gone from thinking big. Now we're going to begin building big. And you, this is uh, we are very excited about being able to what, what this future holds for this outstanding and amazing education community. And on behalf of Dallas ISD, I want to thank the community and the parents, especially for entrusting us with the education of your children. We know your kids uh, know my child is my most valuable asset, and we're just proud to be able to be a partner with you in the education of your children. Okay, here, I think Ms. O'Neill, I think she's back in. So we wait for her to join um, to make closing remarks. Ms. O'Neill. Hello, I apologize. I My internet went down, so I had to jump on my hotspot. Um, so I just want to say thank you, thank you, Thank you for everyone who came out tonight. We are so excited about this uh, new Riley design. We're just excited about the opportunities that's going to be and for your feedback on this evening. Okay, great. So with that being said, we thank everyone again for your time this evening. And we thank you for your dedication and your commitment to the Raleigh community. And we wish everyone a wonderful and joyous evening. And by, by the way, and everyone, if you're a parent or if you're a teacher and educator, um, have a great spring break next week. We'll see you, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.